All right, awesome. All right, well, um, I'm here to talk about my smart serverless cat detection system. Um, now's your time to leave if you don't want to hear about cat detection systems. <laughs> it's your last chance. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, this is me. Linda Nichols, uh, I am at Linda Lou um, all over the internet. GitHub, Twitter, Twitter's the best way to reach me, um, Gmail. Um, so I work at uh, Merging Technology Advisors. Uh, we're a consulting firm um, outside of DC. And uh, it's the greatest place to work. I love my coworkers. I'm not just saying this because this is being recorded, but I do actually like them a whole lot, just like JavaScript and, of course, cats. <laughs> Uh, I also love the community, and I do a lot in my community in Norfolk, Virginia. So I run the uh, Norfolk JS JavaScript user group, uh, NodeBots Day Norfolk. Uh, that will be at the end of July. NodeBots Day is an international event, so there may be one in your city. Um, we also love Revolution Conf, which just happened at the beginning of June. Um, I was one of the primary organizers of that. That was a really great time, and um, I have a lot of empathy for the organizers of this conference now, and I try to really be a low-maintenance speaker for that reason. Um, also, you know, penguins, yay, Stanley Cup, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to cat detection systems. Um, so why did I make a cat detection system? And um, if you have cats, you'll know it's because they're jerks. And when you're sleeping at night, they are doing all kinds of things. And you may need to know if that thing that was broken was your cat or your significant other or your child. It was probably your cat. So I made a system that when a cat is detected, uh, it will text me. But not just anything. It has to be a cat because it's smart and serverless, like I said before. <laughs> so. Um, this is the cat detection system, which you can't really see that well from here. And I don't really want to pop it open because that's really tempting fate on the demo that I want to do later. Um, but there is a Raspberry Pi inside of here um, and a camera. I've got a picture of this coming up too. Um, this little globe here is a PIR sensor, if you're not familiar. But basically, this is the motion detector. And then the camera, there's a little hole right here that, um, for the camera. So basically, it detects motion and immediately takes a picture. Um, and inside there's some lead wires. Um, for a power source, I mean, I've been using like these little cool things I get free at tech conferences. Um, this is great. So I don't plug anything into the wall, I just use these things. And these batteries are getting bigger and a lot cheaper. So yeah, this is what the inside looks like. So you can trust me that it's in here. Um, and I'm using a Pi, but I've also done something similar with a Tessel. Um, since I'm using Node.js, but really any internet connected device, you can do something similar. Um, and so since the Pi in here is just like a little computer, um, I'm running Node.js on the Pi, I'm running, and then I have Johnny5 and the Watson IoT SDK um, running on Node. I'm gonna get to Johnny5 in a second. Um, but the IoT SDK is what allows the Pi to send messages to the IoT platform. Um, so yeah, there's Johnny Five, and also this is Johnny Five. So, um, so Johnny Five actually running on Node allows um, my Pi to be able to access my PIR sensor and my camera. So with that, I'm using the Raspberry Pi I/O to be able to, to to access those two. It really doesn't have anything to do with um, reaching the IoT platform. It's just to access the other hardware that's in here. Um, has anyone in here used Johnny Five? Familiar with Johnny Five? All right. Yeah, it's it's, it's very cool. If you're um, looking to do anything in Node Robotics, um, look at their their documentation. They also have some of the best documentation of maybe any Node module um, in a great community. Okay, so um, what's IoT platform? Um, so this is it. So you have to read that whole message to understand what it is or not. Um, so, yeah, it's a pub sub system for devices. Um, this device publishes data, other devices subscribe to that data, and um, the devices never have to talk directly to one another. Um, so, and when I say devices, I have a little asterisk there because a device doesn't have to be this pie. A device can also be my computer. It's anything that can really push data up to this IoT platform. 
And like I said here too, I mean, it can support billions of devices. So I could have cat detectors all over the world. They're all connected to IoT platform. It's totally cool with that. It does not affect performance at all. It's extremely powerful. And each one of those devices is sending trillions of messages. Um, so yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of cat detections, and it's a lot of cats doing bad things. Um, so the device, when the, the Pi connects to IoT platform, it's sending those devices in this MQTT format. It's a super lightweight message queue format. Um, and it's very, very fast, and it's very, very secure. Um, also, once it gets up, once the data gets up to the, um, the IoT platform, there's um, a rules engine that can then decide where it wants to route those messages that you sent. So really, um, my Raspberry Pi itself is not, it does not have very much code on it at all. The code that's on there just says, hey, I, something was detected, L upload that photo, and send this data out to IoT. It doesn't do anything smart, it doesn't do anything serverless, it's just being a robot. Um, so this is a terrible, terrible diagram, so don't try to read this. Um, but this was sort of the best diagram I could find just to kind of show what it does with um, my device being on top, MQTT being on the right, the platform is in the middle, and I'm kind of showing that once it gets into this device gateway, and um, I have my rules firing that basically these detections can go anywhere. I can go to OpenWhisk, um, anywhere inside of Bluemix once, once I'm there, or I can even um, do a webhook and just put in a URL to some sort of API I have somewhere else. So it's really powerful for um, um, using, you know, if you're already on um, IBM Bluemix, then this is a great way to tie an IoT device um, to an existing application. Um, so yeah, I thought this was serverless, um, and I just talked about a bunch of servers. Um, but that's because serverless is like a made-up marketing term. Um, so I'm going to use it again here. <laughs> so, um, so the serverless part of my project um, is OpenWhisk. Um, and it's the serverless cloud platform. <laughs> but basically, it allows you to write functions you store them in the cloud, and then you're able to access them um, with events. And so maybe that event is an API gateway. Um, maybe you want to hit an API. Maybe that event is, um, you've, uh, is a database record. Maybe it's a file upload. But it's many, many events happening um, within Bluemix um, can trigger these open with functions. And they're very, very tiny uh, and, and really, I don't have to worry about any of the DevOps to create them. I just put my function in OpenWhisk, and then I roll out, and I'm, and I'm okay. I don't have to know anything about containers. I don't have to know anything about like, what it takes to host an application, because it's just this tiny piece of code, and I don't really want to bother with all that. Um, and so it's very cheap, too. And so if you're making something like a cat detector, I'm not, this, this cat detector's not being marketed, okay? So I kind of just looking for something super inexpensive if I'm making these fun projects. So um, I haven't paid anything for this yet, and I've been testing this a whole lot because I'm demoing it in front of all of you people, <laughs> and I've paid nothing, so it's great. Also, like I mentioned before, IoT platform is supporting these billions of cat detectors all over the world because, of course, everyone is seeing this project in, like right now, and they're all making one and hitting IoT platform. Um, but, and they can hit the same open whisk function, and it doesn't matter because it's super scalable. I'm not worrying about the DevOps. Someone else who works at IBM who is awesome is like worrying about making sure that this function continues to work. Um, also, I use Node.js. Um, I'm using Node.js in this project, but I don't have to. I could use basically anything for this code that I'm storing in OpenWhisk. So OpenWhisk is calling a few APIs for me and it's doing like a little bit of work, but um, if I wanna use Node or Swift, I can just use it right out of the box just as it exists in, in Bluemix. If I want to use something like COBOL, I just, I write my COBOL code that does the things I want to do, and then I wrap it in a Docker container, and then I upload it. 
and for right now too, that's really powerful because you know there's other, of course, serverless offerings out there like Lambda. Lambda's great too, but I can't make my own container and upload it. I have to depend on what already exists. And if you work for a company that's not okay with black magic, then you're gonna need something that's open source and that you have a little bit of control over. Um, and yeah, you can actually run COBOL and OpenWhisk. It exists, someone has done it. Yeah, right? <laughs> Okay, so this is kind of what, this is not my code for the, the cat detector. My code is out there. But I'm just, I'm, I'm showing though, this is a real module called cat names, if you want a random name for your cat. Um, but this is how small an OpenWhisk handler can be. And I can create an API gateway within OpenWhisk, and I don't have to like, I don't have to make an express server, I don't have to make a happy server, I don't have to install Node, I have no, like, I know this is Node 6 because I told OpenWhisk I wanna run on Node 6. And that's, that's kinda it. Um, so yeah, feel free to, to copy this and run it. <laughs> all right, so, um, all right, so there's no server. Um, well, there is a server, but we're saying there's not a server because marketing, it's okay, it's cool. <laughs> so this is what makes it smart. Um, my cat detector is smarter than Ken Jennings. We know that because we, we saw it on, have it on Jeopardy. <laughs> um, so I'm using Watson vision recognition APIs. Um, it's, they're very easy to use. You can use them straight out of the box, which is what I'm doing because I'm saying cat or no cat. But I can actually train my own module, uh, my own models if I want to. I could train it to know only my cats, and then I know which one of my cats is being the biggest jerk in the middle of the night. But for now, we're okay with cat or no cat, because we're saying cat or significant other. Who, like, who spilled the water on the, on the counter? It was probably a cat. <laughs> All right, so this is what it looks like. I, I, I take the, the uh, motion detector, uh, fires off, it takes a photo of the cat, uh, it's uploaded, Watson then analyzes this image, um, and this is what you get back, which is, which is Jason. And, we, and it goes through, like this one says, it's an 83% chance this is a domestic cat. And, and it's correct. Um, and it says it's a cat and a feline and a mammal and it says what color it is. Um, out of the box, you can get some really weird um, things back depending on the picture you upload because Watson is really good at, at determining the context of things. So I may take a picture of my cat and there's a little tiny tree in the background and I'll see like forest on here. So um, that's pretty cool too. But the way it's working now, binary cat or no cat. Um, so, so basically this is a summary. I have a device. The device sends messages to the IoT platform. The IoT platform says I have received a device, I've received a message. I know that, um, uh, that it has detected something, but it does nothing to determine what that thing is. It sends it, you know, and then it sends it over to OpenWhisk, and then OpenWhisk then calls Watson, and then it also calls um, Twilio to send me a text, but only if it's a cat. Okay, so this is all of my code. Um, like every little project like this that I do, I publish on the internet, which I think is a good idea so far. No one has really proven me wrong this is a bad idea. Um, <laughs> so the, um, yeah, the top one is the actual code that I put on the Raspberry Pi, um, and then the bottom is, is my OpenWhisk act actions for uh, calling Twilio and calling the, the Watson APIs. Um, I have to give a shout out to James Thomas from IBM, uh, who has helped me out with like a lot of questions and, and weird errors and things that I've had in the process of porting this over, so um, thanks to him. All right, and now it's the demo time. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug this cat detector in. I'm going to need help from someone in the audience. So who would like to be a cat or no cat? Yeah, okay, I see a cat or no cat over there. <laughs> awesome. All right, I'm gonna let that boot up. I'm gonna connect my phone to here and, and I'm gonna really hope that my mom um, doesn't text me for the next few minutes. <laughs> this is dangerous. Make sure. All right. 
That is extremely small. All right, so um, this is what the IoT platform looks like if you haven't seen it before. Um, it's, it has these cards that you can set up that will give you some little, a little bit of information about um, your devices. So I can see the last message that I sent in. I can see some information here about my actual device, like what I called it, the ID. Um, but we're gonna worry about OpenWhisk right now because this is gonna have my logs. You can see sort of my logs where I was kind of testing this before. All right, move this one over here. I need to increase the font on this one. Now I'm going to be a brave soul and connect my phone to the internet to be recorded. All right, there's my phone. That's my cat. He's the cutest cat in the whole world. <laughs> Almost forgot my password. So I've just got like a NPM shortcut here for the cat detector. But the fact I could SSH into it is a good is a good sign for the, the demo gods. All right, I need my cat or no cat. <laughs> <laughs> Like you have to, okay, there it goes. All right, so it's detected like no cat. Um, so it's detected a motion and it is, has taken a photo and it's publishing an event. But I'm not getting any text yet, so there's no cat. But now you're gonna get to be a cat. Actually two, she used to be two cats. Um, so um, for demo reasons, maybe like try to put it about like a foot away from the camera and just kind of be still, but yet move it occasionally. <laughs> Oh man, wait, hold on. And then I have to reboot. And then it's gonna take a minute. Does anyone have any questions while this is rebooting? Sorry, cat. <laughs> Um, I have five. Wow. Yeah. Does it cats or Uh, just cats. Have you tried lions? <laughs> have I tried, what's that? Lions. Uh, no, I have not detected a lion. You know, I mean, you laugh, but I do have a zoo near my house. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have to be, like, super close to detect it, really, maybe. So... I think that would kind of freak out the lion keepers a little bit. I thought the Avery detection proved that. Yeah, I mean, well, so yeah, I mean, you say that. I mean, Watson de can detect emotions, but I think for just people right now. Um. <laughs> I, I mean, I love cats, and I, I tend to agree with you. <laughs> It's going to be good. All right. Normally, this is pretty, pretty instant. It's still booting up, but because it's running on a hotspot, it takes a second to connect to the IoT platform. Come on. All right. So it is now connected to Watson. 
And okay, now you can now you can be be a cat. Yeah, just sort of like maybe move it slowly back and forth. And maybe, yeah. I'm hoping this time maybe we triggered it. Maybe go up a little bit. <laughs> so when I first was testing this out, I tried. I had this stuffed cat that looked a lot like a cat, and I would like kind of dance it in front. But Watson is actually too smart. It was like toy, and so. But th these kittens will usually kind of uh, will kind of trigger it. Um. <laughs> maybe try lifting it up a little bit and try to go a little closer. Let's try to see if that does it. All right, demo gods, come on. <laughs> that would have been really cool, cruel if I was like, oh, you have to meow too. And I was like, just kidding. Oh, no. All right, well, my camera. Oh, yes, yes. Awesome. Just a time for DeVille. All right, thank you. And thank you to our cat. All right, so. Um, Oh, it actually detected it twice. OK, so let's go over here. Uh, yeah, my, my camera overheated uh, just as this worked. So yay. All right, so let's see what our cat looked like. All right, so that was the picture it took. Of like blurry cats. Um, So we'll come over here to where we're monitoring our uh, OpenWIST function. And um, this cat, this one at 405 should be our cat. Yes, cat true. All right, so here, um, let me bump this up so we can actually see it. Not that much. All right, so we can kind of see here from these cats that it classified them as a kitty cat. 71%, so we know this was definitely a cat. Um, but unfortunately, you can see the flaw in the system is that my significant other could be holding a photo of a cat in front of his face, knock something off the counter. Maybe it was a rabbit. Um, but, uh, but overall, it did what it was supposed to do. Uh, it's smart, and um, that's really all I have. Um, but I've got some time for questions. Uh, I think, I think up here first. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Okay, I just got it. Yeah, whoever you get it to first, it's fine. <laughs> so you mentioned you have five kids. What's the accuracy of a correct cat here? in the detection system. I'm Does it give the correct name? What's your cutoff threshold for detecting cat? Um, I just, I'm not doing any percentage right now. Basically, if cat exists in this list of, of 10 items, then I say that's good. Like, it doesn't have to be a certain percentage. And I mean, but, but really, if I'm only choosing 10 items, it really doesn't get below 50%. Thanks. Uh, what part of the system is doing the upload to S3? Uh, it's on the Pi. Yeah, yeah. And actually, um, I have a version of this um, that's going to object storage. Um, but it was like, I was having some issue with it. So for demo reasons, I just kept S3. Any other questions? OK, thank you so much. <laughs> OK. All right.